Hello friends, my name is Shivam from DevOps Schools and I will help you to enable your learning process in various technologies of DevOps, Artificial Intelligence, Machine Learning, Big Data and many more. This is our initiative to help you by sharing multiple tutorials and videos. And if you want any specific tutorials or any particular topic, then please do comment in the below comment section and I will help you with it. Also, please subscribe to our premium services on YouTube which will give you access to more content and videos to enhance your knowledge about all these topics. Also, if you want me to help you with regards to the online trainings and classroom sessions by our qualified trainers, then do please do write me at uh, contact at devopsschool.com. Thank you. Okay, okay, that's, uh, that's all I have. Okay. Yeah. So then AWS Cloud Trail. So I was talking about this is very important a service provided by AWS and uh, uh, this uh, service, the Cloud Trail service, it it is a kind of a logs. It uh, generate uh, it logs each and every event. Like we have uh, in Windows, uh, if, if in Windows if you go in admission tools like uh, someone was saying someone is in operations right Windows admission operations right. Uh, uh, one person so uh, event viewer we have the event viewer so whenever we are logging in logging logging out any any user any anything is happening it it goes in the event viewer it log it gets logged in the event viewer same thing with the uh, cloud trail so every every event is recorded in the cloud trail so it's a massive massive amount of data in the cloud trail And that uh, data is stored in the again the Amazon S3 bucket. Yep. And like uh, and uh, for example like the API call. So even we while we are logging into the AWS, it's API call, right? We are seeing uh, through the front end, but uh, somewhere in at the back end, it is going a uh, API call to the uh, our AWS account. So what is the name of API? Who is logging in? Who, what is the identity of the caller? What is the time we are logging in? Any any type of API call, the request, or what is the request, what is the response? So everything is being logged in the cloud trail. So it is it is very important feature. Is in in case something happens, we can go in the logs and can see what happened. So AWS our architecture to work efficiently and securely with all AWS network and platform. It provides additional security to protect sensitive data and applications. Would be the these are the services specific security so the services which aws provides will go in detail in that and then ec2 security so ec2 multiple levels of security within ec2 is provided at operating system host uh, the hypervisor as i said in previous instance as well for example uh, in the same uh, same physical machine there are multiple instances running right so aws uh, on the on, on the hypervisor so aws is responsible for that so that one machine one physical machine uh, is isolated from uh, even one vms also one ec2 instances or one any any services which uh, which is uh, running on the bare metal hypervisor does not access data for the other uh, other account or the services so that is that is called the uh, that that is part of the aws responsibility so administrators, uh, even AWS administrators, so who need to access the data, they also use their MFA if they are logging into the hypervisors and the bare metals and all those things. So these are all the, while we are talking about EC2, what is the responsibility for uh, of us? like uh, root access or IEM users, uh, it should not get exposed. We, if it does not, if it gets absorbed, AWS does not have any access rights. Uh, for example, if I'm creating an uh, creating an EC2 instance, AWS does in no way have the access rights to access my EC2 instance or the data resides in. They only have the access on the on the machine where my EC2 instance is running. But while EC2 instance is launched, they don't have a, they they can't go inside EC2 instance until I ask this specifically to so I I specifically give them the privilege. For example, so to debug or to uh, to see something. And we can configure the the uh, firewall rules like default is deny all mode, and then we can open the ports uh, for to allow inbound traffic. 
and then we have the EBS volumes. It is it is it is the block block storage we know right. Uh, while we create the EC2 instance, we have already seen the, the the EBS volumes and all this. I believe. Then elastic load balancing security, same thing. And VPC security network SLs routing table internet gateway. These are all the uh, EC2 specific uh, security. So this is, these are not services. Uh, uh, separate services provided by AWS. These are the these are the features to make your EC2 instance more secure. And while we are architecting any solution, we need to take care of like uh, how to create a VPC, uh, what what ports needs to be open, what are the security groups uh, uh, in the security group, what will be the inbound ports which should be open, uh, whether it should be uh, it should be it should be open from the specific IP or it, should, it is it is publicly available. All those things we need to take care. Of. The same. So cloud front security. So we have this cloud front and like uh, the edge locations and the cloud front. Uh, so uh, for that uh, AWS is uh, AWS has made uh, made the uh, has put uh, enough uh, security features to make it because for CloudFront uh, the data which is not uh, dynamically normally we uh, for for the faster access we uh, we store the data on the uh, CloudFront uh, which is not uh, uh, quickly uh, updatable right uh, so static data we normally store it uh, in CloudFront so uh, so uh, your users can access it uh, fast right so uh, to uh, protect it also uh, we have uh, Amazon has put uh, enough uh, security features hey viewers our master in devops engineering program can help you to hone the skills necessary to succeed in high level devops positions so what are you waiting for enroll now and earn certification that show you are keeping pace with today's technical roles and requirements contact info is mentioned in the video sidebars and in the description box book your seats for the upcoming batches now then uh, it is uh, this uh, you will whenever we are talking about uh, security there are two terms which are many uh, very common data in transit and data at rest. So what data in transit means whenever I am accessing the, the data, for example, I am accessing the console. Let's, let me show it to you. So probably uh, you will be uh, so for example, this is my dashboard like I, I am clicking on this. So I created a request which is going inside AWS for my account that I I want to see this uh, this page. So this page this uh, data from my browser to going to the uh, AWS server, right? So the AWS service or AWS API. So this is this uh, the data which is being transmitted is called data in transit, and data is just like uh, like your S3 instance, your S3 buckets, and all this, which is data at rest. So like uh, S3 bucket, EBS, your elastic, uh, uh, your EBS uh, glacier again the S3 and this is again a uh, major glacier is again a S3 type S3 service. Then storage gateway, RDS instance, Redshift workspace. So these are all the services which uh, AWS which we can over, or AWS offers to encrypt data at rest. So but it is our responsibility to encrypt that data to click those options if required so that the data is encrypted in uh, in these services for example if i am creating an s3 bucket it is my responsibility that uh, i choose the option to encrypt that data with the kms key or whatever or default uh, default key is provided by aws so guys any questions so far So this this was uh, what I was trying to give the overview. So what is what is the security? Uh, oh, wait, and yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, just trying to interrupt. So you said, uh, you know, could you go back uh, one slide to to twenty five? Okay, so so I guess to, uh, so here you're talking about the specific services that you know, like uh, with the. So CloudFront is a service provided by AWS. If uh, let me show it to you. Okay. So this is the global content delivery network. So in this, what 
this is called global uh, so what normally uh, normally for example uh, this service what this service does what this service is uh, all about so although means uh, okay we are drifting away but let me actually do as you are asking so this is for accelerated reliable and secure content delivery for amazon s3 buckets application load balancer and all those things more in five minutes or less so in this uh, i think rajesh has left anyway so this is what uh, uh it is actually a edge locations kind of thing where your data which is not very quickly updated uh amazon cloud front uh caches the data and uh, uh and then uh when uh when uh, a request made to that particular uh, particular data first uh, if you are you are using this amazon cloud front as a service first that uh, it check uh, it checks whether that uh, data is available at cloud front if it is available at uh, amazon cloud front it will be served from the amazon cloud front else it will go to the backend like is to instance or your application uh, and it will be served from there so it, uh, so to reduce the load on your applications you are running in your uh, backend application we we we, uh, we can design the uh, system in such a way so that data will be communicated through the cloud front so but we have the data in the cloud front right so it uh, amazon has made the provision so that it, it is also not exposed uh, uh, unauth- uh, it is not exposed uh, uh, unauthorized way in, a, in an authorized way yeah okay because it, like you were talking about the data at rest and data in transit so and and in cloud front is one of the solutions that that deals with the i guess data data in transit I guess uh, you know. yeah that's correct Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah I, guess, I, I guess we can. Yeah. So both, uh, if uh, so, the, uh, we, this, uh, so both are the Amazon provides all the things are in the security. All endpoints uh, support the encryption of data in transit via HTTPS. So even oh, cloud front also. Okay. Yeah. We do. You brought up a, like one thing on twenty-five to elastic load balancers. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I guess what what load load balancing is. Okay. So, yeah. I guess. I guess these are specific. Like the, like what are the two key point? What we should know about the the ELB security and then uh, and then the, the, the VPC security. Uh, so oh, sorry, could, could not get the. Can you please video? Uh, oh, okay, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I guess uh, here you talked about the elastic load balancing security and the Amazon uh, VPC VPC security. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you want more explanation in this or? What? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'd like a little bit more explanation. On yeah. This. Yeah. So uh, load balancing security for you know what is load balancer right uh, so yeah. that whenever there is a request it goes to the load balancer and then uh, a load balancer decide uh, which instance has to serve that uh, thing right uh, the health instance and all load balancer all always detects which are the health instance and all those things right mm-hmm. so uh, when uh, you are making a request to elastic load balancer and then elastic load balancer uh, going back to the uh, going to, uh, going back to the specific service to uh, to serve the data, right? Mm-hmm. To serve. so there is a communication between so that communication is uh, protected through HTTPS. That's what uh, it is trying to say. Yeah. So and it says uh, and, and I guess uh, it, it generates uh, like the long term and, and short term key. Okay. And then and then uh, and then I guess. Uh, the next uh, next slide session key. It, it is talking about the session key so uh, we but we design the system in such a way that our mm-hmm. sessions for example uh, let me uh, tell you for example there are uh, i uh, uh, for example uh, there is a banking application running on the two servers and mm-hmm. uh, there is a load balancer uh, in front of that now i uh, when i logged into the system i don't know which server uh, is uh, uh, processing my request it is going to the server one now the next request because of load so uh, in fact uh, if uh, i will i'll come to that point 
uh, we can design such a way for example in the elastic load balancer that uh, hey viewers trying to get into devsecops and all for our devsecops certified professional programs and earn the certification that shows you are fit for these technical roles and requirements contact info is mentioned in the video sidebars and in the description box book your seats for the upcoming batches now the session resides in one server so for example if i have created the session in the server one my all other requests will be served from the session uh, server one the other way is i can create the uh, session on the so elastic load balancer knows my session request uh, my session so it may go from uh, server one or server two and uh, we have to design our application in such a way so that uh, uh, the uh, my session is not lost whether my request uh, is served from se server one or from the server two okay that makes sense and then for amazon like a like virtual pri pri like private yeah, security vpc so we create a, like security groups acl and routing tables so in security group we define the inbound and output por outbound ports right yeah. then we and we have the for uh, network acls and subnets uh, right mm -hmm. so for example we are i am creating two uh, two vpcs how how those two vpcs can communicate to each other what are the uh, uh, what are the route tables what are the ip addresses exposed exposed and all those things yeah, so I guess sometimes uh, uh, like uh, is, VP, is VPC peering and you know, like uh, is that part of like part of like a like virtual uh, like a cloud like security? Uh, so it is in a, it is not a separate service provided by AWS, but uh, while we are designing a system, obviously VPC uh, peering we have to we have to take the consideration so that obviously, but I mean, in fact, it's an important consideration that. Uh, uh, we need to take care so that uh, our uh, the access and uh, the access inbound access specifically the inbound access are uh, protected okay okay yeah okay that's that's all i have thank you so I have designed a few quizzes. These are very, very basic. Uh, just, uh, just uh, our to just uh, refresh our our interesting understanding. So, like, what are the three authentication options offered by AWS? The username, password, certificate, and access keys, or monitoring password and locking system, or access key system monitoring and password. So. We know, right? We have uh, already really it is username, password, certificate, and access key. As uh, Boris has already asked, uh, the different authentication mechanism we need to uh, in some slide in this slide. So these are all the authentication mechanisms. So right. So username, password, certificate, and access keys are the authentication mechanism uh, to access any service in AWS. And what is the recommended way to protect access key? So trained, I will I will tell what is access key. Uh, but uh, we need to train developers how to better protect their access key. Define IAM policy. I, I think this is uh, out of uh, as of now you will not understand what is IAM policy and all. I will go to that topic. But uh, all of the above is the answer. And then uh, we have uh, which tool is um, for monitoring. So we just uh, the cloud watch is uh, is uh, is for the monitoring. We just check it. And AWS multi factor authentication. Uh, this is a process that adds increased security to an account by using multiple forms of authentication. So, I, I, I will show all these things to you, not only. Yeah. And then. Um, which service provides encryption service for both data in flight and data at rest. So S3 service always always have data in flight. Means whenever we are up uploading any data to S3 bucket, uh, it is encrypted and then we can enable the encryption at data at rest. Yeah. So I am done with this is my this slide and any any questions so far? We are uh, we have completed one hour also. So. Uh, we are okay good so <laughs> so we'll take a break after some time probably or if uh, you you guys need a break now you can tell me else we will take a break after some time how how you see okay then we'll continue no problem yeah.
so now we talk about now we have seen what is uh, what are the security best practices what is our responsibility what is aws responsibility um, what are the uh, different uh, how, which which is the service which logs each and every event uh, and what are the different consideration we need to take care while uh, talking about the ec2 so these things we have already seen it now we talk about the different security services which aws provides the first and foremost is the iem and iem is the topic uh, in fact you can spend uh, 10 hours also so it is it is so large but uh, we'll try to cover up cover up uh, uh, to see the understanding what is iem so for one thing while i talk about iem uh, i i think every everyone knows there are two things so when we uh, talk about iem uh, identity and access management one is authentication and one is the authorization so authentication i am authenticated let's say so let me show it to you so probably so uh, i am already logged into this um, console right aws console you all you all you guys also i i in fact i'm not wrong as you have already done uh some aws basics course so you have already also created the some aws free tire consoles and all those things right so i am authenticated to uh to enter to access the aws console to access this my account so i am authenticated to uh, log in in this account doesn't mean i am authorized to access each and every service in the account i can create an user to access this uh, console but only to the specific services like let's say he is he can only access he is only permitted and that to read only access he only per, has only read only permission to access only s3 permission and let's say one more service he has the permission to create the ec2 instance but but not to delete any ec2 instance so that is the authorization i can provide hey viewers are you looking for formal training on sre practices take our sre program this course will teach you how to successfully implement site reliability engineering in the modern day 24 into 7 services kick start your sre training today contact info is mentioned in the video sidebars and in the description box book your seats for the upcoming batches now so that is the difference between authentication and authentication. Authentic authentication means I am permitted to log in. I am authenticated while I am right putting my username password to AWS console. I am permitted to log in, in this AWS account. Doesn't mean I am authorized to uh, to see or use each e, uh, to uh, use any of any service provided by AWS. The until i am authorized to access those services i can't uh, use those services so that is the basic part of i am any question in this because that is very important the difference between authentication and authorization all it is very basic and i know every computer every it guys uh, knows it but still i wanted to iterate before <coughs> before uh, explain uh, going inside the i am yeah, so I guess I, I, I am a, uh, uh, so like I am, it's just, it's just an internal management. I guess what you said in your slide is, it, it's just, a, it, it's just, a, it gives access to AWS infrastructure, but, but applications, you, you're going to have to use some different identity management software. No, 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 no. We can, we can management to, <coughs> one minute, one minute, Boris, I need to take some water. And we can also authorize uh, through IAM. Uh, and we can also authorize through IAM the services which uh, which are granted to the to the specific user. Uh, so I, I will show it to you how how we'll authorize it. I will show it to you. Don't worry about it. So uh, IEM is to uh, let's uh, go for uh, till I think I have the lab as well. Yes. Yeah. So I just wanted to see if I have the lab, else I could start lab it's now itself. So IEM is to manage AWS users and their access to AWS account and services, which is authentication. 
with iem you can manage users group iem access policies and the roles these, they, these are the four uh, four primary attributes of iem user group policies and the roles and then uh, for the applications so what uh, uh, iem is for the uh, to provide authentication and authorization to provide the aws services not to the application what do you mean by application for example i i am running a um, uh, so let me open the first i am then so this is uh, how you go to the i am services so let's say i have a banking application which is running on my aws infrastructure so uh, this i am service does not manage users for the banking application it manages users it manages uh, users for the infrastructure in which on which my application is running but the application my banking application or my uh, e card application or my any other application which is running on my infrastructure i don't man this iem service does not manage uh, users on that particular uh, application uh, is it okay or uh, uh, does it make sense boris is it okay hello guys can you hear me yes uh, yeah i guess it, it makes sense because like i guess a customized application you have to use something to, to different different correct correct then yes i hear you yeah correct in fact the operating system it is not also not an operating system identity management so operating system is also something like a, so operating system it manages who can create the operating system but it once operating system is created once ec2 instance is created who can log in into the ec2 instance it does not manage so who can create who can delete who can reboot those ec2 instance it manages but once the ec2 instance is created who can log in who has who who can do what on that ec2 instance it does not manage so uh, that is what uh, what it is trying to say aws iem is to manipulate iem aws infrastructure that i already mentioned the resource and services under your aws account so a principal is an iem identity which has the permission on aws so, so what is what is a principal so principal is an iem entity uh, like users role so these are all the principles which uh, the principal can be permanent or temporary giving permission so we can we can uh, we can give a temporary access also on a aws service or uh, on an aws service to a person or an application because uh, why person is okay for example i want to access uh, the uh, i want to ex have the authorization to create an instance but sometimes application also needs some uh, to do some activity on the on your instance uh, on your uh, services for example uh, let's say what uh, what should be the example let's say uh, there is an application running which actually i uh, i am uh, i have cre i am creating the application which actually uh, uh, uploading the data on your s3 bucket so for that uh, that application which is uploading the data to the s3 bucket needs the permission on the s3 bucket right so that principal can uh, can provide that permission to the to your application uh, so that that application can upload the data to the s3 bucket and then uh, the different type of uh, uh, principles uh, uh, like uh, entities uh, i am i am chris and the root user uh, which is i am right now i am the uh, i i'm using actually viraja account so i am the uh, root user then uh, which so root user the user which creates the aws account is called root user who puts their credit card in form uh, credit card details in simple very simple detail or who who pays the bill he is the user, root user he has the full administrative privilege and access to all the services he can do anything what he wants then we have the iem users root user creates the iem users and then provide the 
what services uh, the IAM user can access it. So any new user created in AWS account will be created with no access to any AWS services except the ability to log in. That's what I am trying to say. And then the permission must be given explicitly to the IAM user or through the roles to grant access to AWS services. <coughs> then we have the roles or the temporary security tokens. <coughs> roles are used to grant privilege to specific resources associated to it. The temporary security tokens are used to provide so temporary only resource for a set duration. So normally we provide uh, roles or uh, we associate roles or temporary security to tokens to the resources we create in the AWS. And then these are the best practices what we should follow. Like uh, we should all we should we should never create the access keys in the root account. <laughs> and if it is created, we uh, for some specific word, it should not be forward. We should delete those access uh, root access keys from the time to time. Guys, <coughs> one Yeah, guys. So. Uh, then we should activate the MFA on your root account because because in case your password is exposed uh, <coughs> the user who has the access on your um, MF uh, on your root account uh, can do anything because he, he has he has the privilege of each and everything then uh, to do specific tasks you should create individual IAM users so you should not do the activities through the root account <coughs> your day-to-day -day operations so you should create the for that you should create the IAM users then uh, use groups to assign permissions so we should uh, rather than uh, assigning permission to individual users we should create the groups and then associate those groups to the IAM users thanks for watching want to study further join our training programs today